a friend of mine came up a while back and he brought a raccoon skin up and he asked if I could make him a hat. Excellent. Something totally unique. Completely unique. Not Original. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> One might say. And he said he, want, he didn't want the tail on it. We're just like, what? Raccoon without a tail. Hmm, okay. But he wanted a visor. So that's what I did. He hasn't seen it yet, so I hope he likes it. Well, we were uh, talking about the, the hat, Jim Fleet, who I made it for, and he's mm -hmm. here now to uh, collect it up and see if it fits, and here we are. Well, thank you very much, Brian. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Very well. What a gift. I'm sure uh, this will be passed down through the years to my son. Yeah, on the visor, I um, did some tooling. I made a, a stamp that looks like a scale and stamped the whole thing. And after doing this one, I'm dying to do one, a beaver one because this just looks like a beaver's tail. Uh, this is a uh, raccoon pelt. I uh, picked it up in one of the antique stores around here. Three different pieces of fur, all out of the same piece of fur. <laughs> so what I do is um, I start back at the tail for the back and I cut a four and a half inch strip across and then I move up the hide and I cut another four and a half inch strip. That would be the front and uh, the back and the front, sorry. And then I generally, for the raccoons in particular, I try to get the, the fur from right behind the head to put on the top. And these bands of fur that I've cut for the for the you know sides, they're all darted all the way around. There's um, a dart every inch, and that makes the fur roll up and over nice and look natural, uh, rather than go uh, uh, have hair sticking out here and there where it's not supposed to. Um, that trick works good on. Every fur I've ever made, I've done bear skin hats and otter skin hats and beaver skin hats and all these different uh, furs and it always comes up nice and rounded over. I believe there's a lot of people who are trapping still. Mm -hmm. uh, there still is a oh, lot yeah. for yeah. it. But uh, mostly ornamental hanging on the wall type stuff. Uh, years ago, imagine what business they had. The beaver business and yeah. everything was shipped to England for Beaver hats, I believe. They yeah, mushed them up with wool. To the felt, yeah. Yeah, kind of yeah. put them in a mold. And, uh, well, like a modern day Stetson or any of that. Yeah, They're made yeah. out of beaver today. Yeah. And uh, a good hat. You can look inside and see the guard hairs shining. You know? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, and then I made <clears throat> brass buttons. Close end braid for the for the strap on the front. I could I just stumbled upon the pelt in one mm -hmm. of these stores, and uh, someone told me Brian was making hats, and I, I said, "Well, here's a an adventure." Yeah, you know, I didn't want the tail. You notice it? Yeah, no, I was going to ask you why didn't you want the tail? Well, you know, you pick up controversy with people. Uh -huh. You know, they're always pulling it and whatever. You know, how mm -hmm. people have fur coats. Right, but. Uh, I just, I like the trapper look, mm -hmm. you know, more French trapper, I believe. Yeah, that's definitely a mountain man. Yeah, that's what I mean. yeah. yeah. You can see why they're warm. I, this, this is warm. Yeah. Really. Oh, you know, I had, first hat I made was a raccoon hat, and it had to be really cold <laughs> to not bust out in a sweat. Right. <laughs> so, yeah, they're very, very warm. Yeah. This is fully lined. It has a, a nice uh, satin lining, <clears throat> and there's also a wool level, you know, layer, and a, a leather sweatband so it doesn't ride all over your head. It's pretty much stays put. I will wear it with honor. Cheers to you, Helen. Cheers. That's the good stuff. That's the black belt. That's the one you brought up. Friendship. May it serve you well. Thank <laughs> you.